Okay, so right up front, before we jump into the review, here's your content warnings or trigger warnings, what 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 have you. I have absolutely no problem uh, offending people or seeing people offended, but I do have I do take issue with triggering people. So uh, your content warnings are rape, cutting. Uh, death of a child, suicide, and I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, just know that going into this one, there's going to be a lot of triggers for some of you. Um, and also, there's going to be spoilers sprinkled throughout. I will try to tell you where they where they are and let you know. Um, I'll flash a spoiler warning or say a spoiler warning at some point in the video. But there are two stories specifically that I could not talk about without spoilers. So there you have it. There's your warning. On with the review. E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about the follow-up, but not quite the follow-up to Mediana Enriquez's uh, Things We Lost in the file, Fire. F not the files. The Fire. Uh, the Dangers of Smoking in Bed. Now why I say kind of follow-up, not quite follow-up, because I was informed by a friend of mine on Goodreads that this book was actually uh, it was published before uh, Things We Lost in the Fire, um, but it was translated afterwards. Uh, Enriquez is a is a Buenos is an author from Buenos Aires uh, and writes almost exclusively about that area of the world. I'm gonna go through and talk about my favorite stories. This one wasn't a perfect experience for me, like Things We Lost in the Fire, but uh, for those of you who like to click on here and get my uh, my rating and just move along with your lives, I'm giving this one five stars also. I do have one minor criticism about a story later on in the book, but we'll get to all that without spoilers, so let's jump right into the review. Now I won't be talking about every single story in this collection. There's 12 stories and they are all middling to fantastic. Uh, I am shocked that some of these stories came before the stories of things we lost in the fire just because they are so good. Um, does anything in this collection compare to Under the Black Water? which is my second favorite short story of all times, only beating out In the Hills, The Cities by Clive Barker. Uh, no, nothing in here even comes close to that. Uh, and that story in Things We Lost in the Fire is leaps and bounds above everything else. If I could give it 10 stars, I would. That's how much better that story is than anything else. But it speaks volumes to the quality of the collection that I still rated the entire thing five stars because it's that's an amazing collection. This one is a very, very good collection. It is not amazing. I can tell that I, I can tell in some of the stories that they were earlier stories or they might have been earlier stories. Uh, but with, with this one, I did have some questions later on. Um, with one of the stories I had an issue with, but we are going to start with Our Lady of the Quarry. Uh, this is the second story in the book. Uh, it is a fantastically dark, subtly creepy story about a group of kids who go out, well, teenagers, who go out to the quarry to swim and just all around mess around and they come across the lady of the quarry which is a statue um it dressed in red it's just it's very very creepy um it reminded me a lot of another story uh but there's a i don't even want to tell you what it is because if you know that story um it's going to spoil this story for you uh but this is where uh, mariana enriquez really shines with the subtly creepy um, that's not to say that she does not do gory, balls to the walls, brutal horror well also, but this is a perfect example of her doing subtle work. Okay, so one of the themes in this uh, collection, uh, a very heavy theme in this collection are curses, um, uh, the dead coming back to life, that, that kind of thing, um, hauntings, 
you know, your, your typical horror, but Enriquez does a fantastic job putting uh, her own special blend, her own special twist on these stories. The next story I want to talk about is The Cart. It's about um, one of those food cart vendors um, comes to this street, bad things happen, and the uh, residents of this neighborhood end up becoming cursed. Uh, it, it is something... Un it was something unlike anything I had read before. The over the overall plot isn't anything new or original, but I love how uh, how much time passes in such a short period of time. Um, it's a it's a very short story. I think it might be ten pages long, twelve pages, something like that. And most of the stories in here are that short. Um, except for the one that I had an issue with, but we'll get to that. Um, I'm actually going to talk about that one next, even though it is toward the end of the book. Um, but I want to balance this with uh, my positives and my negatives. So the cart, um, I, I really enjoyed watching this this story play out. Um, it had a lot of my favorite uh, tropes and instances, or you know, it had a lot of my favorite horror tropes in it, and I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have a story that should have been great for me. It should have been utterly fantastic, but I'm really tired of this type of story. Um, I don't know why, I just am, and this story went on way, way too long, and that is Kids Who Come Back. I should have loved this just for, just for the, I, I don't know, man, the, I guess the, the, the creepiness of the, and I mean, it, Kids who come back, you you know what we're talking about here. I should have enjoyed it more than I than I did, but I didn't quite see. For such a long story, I saw the point, but I didn't see the point. And what I mean by that is, I I have a feeling I I don't know. There was there was LGBT. Well, there was specifically there was a, a lesbian in the story, and the theme seemed to be this. I'm going to try, try and compartmentalize my thoughts on it. It seemed to be an allegory for uh, gay kids coming out to their parents and parents not supporting them. Because these kids, uh, there was a very, I felt that there was a very LGBT uh, QIA plus theme to it. Um, that one of the characters was a lesbian. Um, one was bisexual. Uh, that, but the story had to do with these kids... And this is spoilers for this story, so if you don't want spoilers, uh, I'll try and remember to leave a, a thing so you can skip ahead to the next thing. So spoilers in three, two, one. They're the, these kids who run away, disappear, whatever, uh, these kids die, um, even if the family doesn't know they're dead. Um, and then all of a sudden they start appearing in these different parks around the city. And then they end up going back home once they are... once the authorities figure out where to put them or if the family finds them, whatever, because some of the families come to the parks looking for their lost kids. They get them home, realize that they are not the same kid that they thought they were. I think that's important here. Um, and then they end up kicking them back out on the street or sending them off to hospitals or w what have you. Um, I think that's what it is. But it seemed like that was a good thing in the story. Um, and that's what I had issue with. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm so, I'm conflicted. I don't want to believe that Enrique is, you know, was saying that, you know, the, the kids should be shunned. I, I, I'm not sure, but toward, toward the end, there, there is an idea that they're going to get their payback and so on and so forth. So maybe it's a positive message. Overall, the story just didn't work for me, and it was so long and tedious to read. This is nothing like any of the other stuff that I have read from Mediana Enriquez. Uh, there's, um, there, well, she doesn't do a whole lot of dialogue anyways. This one was really, really narrative heavy, and I didn't enjoy reading it. So on top of the themes being a little bit convoluted, and I'm not sure exactly what she was trying to say. Maybe she wasn't trying to say anything at all. Maybe it was just your basic basic ass, <laughs> basic ass horror story, you know, the old joke, you know, the teacher asks, what did the author mean by the, uh, by the curtains are blue, and then it says, the author, I meant the curtains are fucking blue, <laughs> you know, um, th there might not be any underlying tone there, it might just be a story of, you know, zombie kids, but they're not zombies, uh, they're more of a ghost kind of thing, because they walk through walls at one point, um, it's also, that was a little weird, it's like they could walk through walls, but sometimes they were tangible, sometimes they weren't. I don't know. The world building 
it didn't work for me. Um, so this is the that's the only complaint I have about this story, that that one story was too long, too convoluted. The author's message got lost, or even if there was a message, I couldn't even tell. Um, so that's my one complaint. And now we're going to move on with the rest of the amazing content in this collection. Next up, we have a story uh, kind of came out of nowhere for me. This story is Where Are You, Dear Heart? Uh, this story was absolutely freaky. Um, I don't want to spoil too much for, for you, but this is one of the most unique stories I've heard, uh, I've read because it has to do with a woman with a heartbeat kink. Yes, you heard that right. Her kink, what gets her off is abnormal heartbeats. Um, so she ends up finding someone and just like, you know, the, the, the true story about the cannibal who found the man who actually wanted to be eaten, um, she finds somebody that uh, will allow her to, you know, listen to the heart and all that. Stuff. I love the way it ended. Uh, the last couple paragraphs of this story is absolutely fantastic. It might be my favorite story in the collection, which is very re weird because it is heavily, heavily horror erotica. Um, there was some there was some points in there where I, I got a little aroused and I can be completely honest with you. Uh, I usually don't with stories. I'm a very visual person when it comes to things like that. Um, I like looking more than I like reading, um, so I don't care too much for erotica. The only erotica author I've ever read um, that did anything for me before this story is Sonora Taylor um, with an erotica piece that I read fr from her about Krampus. Uh, hey, look, don't shame. <laughs> Anyways, but this was... This was one of those stories, man, that came out of nowhere for me because I was started reading and I was like, this is a little too erotic for me. And I was like, I'm glad it's as erotic as it is. But if anybody else reads this one and thinks I'm weird for getting turned on in certain parts, none of it had to do with like blood or guts or anything. It's certain things that the woman does um, that was like, wow, that's that's hot. But um, if anybody else read this and was like, God, he is just just too weird for me. I would love to hear from you. I don't care if you can't shame me. But it's I would I would love to hear from you because this one I felt was really, really sexy. And if I'm alone in this, I'd, I'd love to know if that's just me, you know. Anyways, on to the next story. OK, so the next story is called Meat, M-E-A-T, not to be confused with Patrick DeLacy's. I think it's Dele Patrick. It might be. I might have said that wrong. But um, the uh, the author of Meat, who uh, anyways, it has nothing to do with that. Um, this story is about a I love stories about cults. I love stories about music. This is about a pop star who releases an album called Meat, and then right afterwards kills himself. Um, there is there is a scene of necro-cannibalism in this story that really got underneath my skin. Um, if, you, if, you, if you can't put two and two together, necro-cannibalism is human beings eating dead human beings. Uh, there's a bit in there that really, really disgusted me. Um, I hope that's not too much of a spoiler. Uh, it probably is, so I apologize. I'm gonna put a spoiler alert at the beginning of this thing, uh, just to let everybody know. Uh, and I'll put a content warning too, so I'll go back and do that. This is just to, to remind myself. So E, go back and, and do those things. But uh, th this story, by the time we got to the end of it, I was like, this is this is a fantastic fantastic idea and I would my only criticism here is I would have loved to have read an entire novel about this pop star who who commits suicide and creates this cult following afterward I really really think that that would be uh, uh, something that I would like to read fleshed out even more um, I find that to be an issue with uh, all short well all short stories that I really really love and I think you guys have the same problem too I hear this a lot it's too short that's a compliment. You know, more p people want to stay in your world longer. Uh, it's a hundred percent a compliment. At least, at least for me, it is. When people say, "Hey, your book's too short," I take it as a compliment. Um, unless they're like, "It's you know, you didn't wrap up any." If that's a problem, then then we have issues. But um, if they just wanted more of the same content, that's awesome. That's a win um, for me, and I feel it's a win when I say it. I wish this story was longer. Okay, now we're going to talk about no birthdays or baptisms. Uh, there is a very disturbing line in here that uh, made me stop reading. Um, Mariana Enriquez describes uh, girls from the ages of six to nine in very sexual, very sexual language. 
Um, I spoke to my friend Nat about this. Uh, T.C. Parker. Uh, that's uh, she, Natalie Edwards or T.C. Parker. She, uh, she writes under both names. Um, it, I was talking to her about it, and I asked, should you know, should we give? Should we give should we give Enrique's a pass because it's a woman writing about little girls? I don't know. I really don't. Uh, it did disturb me. So if that was the point, it she got it. I mean, it's it's language like water, you know, trickling down an ass crack, but it's literally like trickling down her ass instead of like butt or butt butt cheeks or buttocks, you know, something a little more neutral than, than ass. And also the reason why it's being explained is because the, the video that is being taken is going to, uh, maybe a, maybe pedophile. I mean, it, I'm just got a pedophile. Cause it's, it's somebody who wants images of a child of, of a little girl <laughs> under the age of 10, you know, not naked, but with more flesh shown. That's that's literally from the book. Um, that really, really bothered me. Uh, it, it got under my skin, like I said. Uh, so be forewarned when you go into this story, man. You're going to read some stuff that you probably don't want to read. I hope it's on purpose. I'm thinking it's on purpose. So I'm not going to give Enrique's a pass. I'm going to tell you I enjoyed the story in so much as the story disturbed the hell out of me. So I, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt, uh, that, that language, and I'm going to say that it was there to disturb and it did its job. Now we're going to talk about the titular story, uh, uh, the, uh, the dangers of smoking in bed. This one was so well done. It is the second to last story. Um, the, I think it should have been the very last story because I, I think it ended with uh, a much stronger punch. Here's what I got from this. Uh, and once again, spoilers in three, two, one. Here's what I got from this story. The person who dies at the beginning of the story, smoking in bed, burns down. They fell, they were under the possession of an entity that then possesses through the smoke that she's constantly smelling the main character of the story. So there's this thing in this apartment complex or whatever that is going around and possessing people and making them smoke under the covers, smoke in bed. And they, they, that's how, that's how I felt. It is not, Im, it, it's kind of implied, but it is never fully said. Um, and most of the stories in here, you're going to have to do the legwork yourself. The, the, the crumbs are there. It's, it was the same way with things we lost in the fire. Um, there were breadcrumbs strewn everywhere. You had to piece it together. Um, and it's not so overly obtuse that you get angry about it, that you dislike it. At least not for me. Um, not as much as like a Jock Jems. Um, that's a, her stuff is much, much more ambiguous and obtuse, like the grip of it. Um, and then I forget lucky, lucky number. So I can't remember what her short story collection was, but, um, it, it's more, you get more, um, from Enriquez than you did Jems. Uh, I, I, I recommend both of them very highly, but the, uh, with, with this one, I, I don't, th I, I'm hoping I got it right. You know, um, I'm hoping that I, that I found the breadcrumbs and that I followed them to completion. I may not have, but I'm hoping that I did. So that's it. That's like I said, I didn't talk about all of the stories and that was on purpose because, uh, some of them had less of an impact for me, but I highly suggest you read the entire collection because th there's nothing as strong as under the black water from things we lost in the fire. But every single story in here is worth a read. Even the one that I had issue with, but that story shouldn't have been that long and that obtuse that vague like what what's the point of this is it just straight horror are you trying to be deeper because all the rest of your stuff is deeper so i'm sitting here trying to trying to find uh your i don't know i guess your intention uh the if i if i can talk to the author real quick um if, if i could find your intention for that story maybe it would be better i think it might be a better story to read more than once and that's kind of the problem because it is the longest story. I think it's longer than anything in Things We Lost in the Fire also. But have you read The uh, the Dangers of Smoking in Bed with its absolutely, it's upside down, absolutely gorgeous cover? Um, 
Let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not uh, you loved it, whether or not you hated it, and let me know why you loved it and hated it. Definitely tell me your favorite and your least favorite stories down there in the doobly-doo. I love to read those. Uh, I'd love to read other people's experiences, so please do that down there. Um, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.